would like to start with a short moment of prayer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to bow down your hands. Lord Jesus, we come before you. And we thank you for everything you accomplished. So that we could stay before you, washed in your blood. And your daughters. And, and, and in unity, Lord, we come before you. And we want this time together to be a time where we honor you. That we honor you in everything we say, Lord. And that you talk to us, Lord. Everyone here, Lord, needs your touch. And I pray, Lord, that you will us leave your blessing upon us. Amen. Amen. I'm very glad to be here tonight, today. It's a beautiful day outside. Mm -hmm. I decided to follow Jesus when I was 16. It was the best decision of my life. And since then, I walked with him. If not for this grace, I would not be alive today. If not for this, His grace, I would not have His peace, the joy of salvation. Everything we are and everything we have, we owe to our Savior and Lord. And I am here, a testimony before you. Not that I'm any better than any of you. I'm here because God is great and God has been good to me. And He is good to you and he has great plans for you. I have very short time, so I, I'm gonna just touch a few points. 16 years ago, I was at a conference called Encounter with God. Sorado de Kamalos was there, uh, Sister Mihaela, who is now with the Lord, was there, and I think you were there, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was a conference that changed my life. The, the last day of the conference, I was given the gift of speaking in tongues, <coughs> although I was raised a Baptist, and I'm still going to a Baptist church. My husband is a pastor. But praise the Lord, because he has no boundaries. The Holy Spirit knows Amen. no boundaries. Amen. The day before the conference, we were presented with a piece of paper. And we were called to come before the Lord to get clean, to go deep before the Lord and see if there is anything in our life that's holding us back from the abundant life God has for us. And I was, I was like, I don't think I have any sin in my life. I'm, I'm pretty okay, but I will take the paper. I, as I was reading, I came to a question. Do you have sins of unforgiveness in your life? First, I was a little taken back, sins of unforgiveness. That means that somebody did something wrong for, to me, and I didn't forgive them, correctly? And the sin is mine now because I didn't forgive, forget, forgive them. And the Lord spoke to me that moment. Mary, Maranella, I died for your sins. But I also died for everything ever done wrong against you. For every word that was spoken to you wrong, I died on the cross. And I had deep pains. I know what abuse is. I know what neglect is. I was raised by an aunt. My parents didn't want me. I know hurt. And I took that to the cross that week. I put it on the paper and I kept writing. I kept writing. I kept writing. Page after page. Page after page. And I know it was symbolic. We took all these pages and we nailed them on the cross. And, and then we took them outside and burned them on a barbecue. And, and I saw before my eyes how, how everything disappeared. And I will tell you a secret. If you want to know that you forgive, think about how much you meditate on it. Because if you truly forgive, you will forget. And up to that point, I was sharing my pain. It was like I had this big scar on my heart. And, and I would not let it heal. Every, every time Jesus would come to heal it, I was scratching it. I was like, no, let me tell you what, things, what happened to me. Let me share with you what happened to me. And I would cry, people would cry, people would feel sorry, but I was not free. No. That past kept me in bondage and kept me from what God had for me. And I learned that with forgiveness. Mm. Months went by, and one day I was like, wait a minute. It's been a year and I didn't share with anybody my pain. I'm not meditating upon it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm forgiven. I'm free. And I thank the Lord for that. And I want to tell you, 
If you want to be filled with your Holy Spirit, Holy, the Holy Spirit fills clean vessels. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the vessel might not be dirty because you did something wrong. The vessel might be dirty because somebody put dirt on it. But Jesus took that upon him. Yeah. And when you understand that everything you suffer, he already took it upon yes. him on the cross. You yes. don't have to carry it anymore. Yes. A second thing that I learned is to, is to know what priority is. We went two years ago in a vacation. We went to Paris and we went to Iceland and that was the trip of our life. We have, oh, my three beautiful daughters, please stand up. We have three beautiful daughters and a son. And this was the trip of our life. So I went to Costco and I bought a very expensive camera. Yeah? You don't blame me. Yeah? yeah. I wanted good pictures and I want a lot of pictures. So I took that camera with us, but we went to Paris, and from Paris we went to Iceland, and when we got to Blue Lagoon, the family we were with, they were like, maybe they don't have towels there, so let's buy towels. One that shops at Ross and Target and TJ Maxx, when I had to pay three times for towels, like I paid here, I really valued these towels, and I still have them, a pink one and a green one. And I, I wanted to take them back home. I paid a lot of money for these towels, yeah? They were, towels are good. They were good towels. But the price I had to pay was that I had to take something out of the bag because I couldn't fit everything in it. So what did I take out? I took out the camera. So the camera went from one person to another person to another person until it got to one of the kids and it, it was left behind. I still don't have the cameras, the pictures are gone, thanks God, and we, went, we didn't go alone, and I still have some of the pictures. But God spoke to me. The battle is not between good and bad. You know best. None of you go home and say, what shall I do now? Shall I play a video game or shall I wash the dishes? I don't think we have that battle. Yeah? We, we choose between spending time with our family, praying, reading the Bible, cleaning, calling a friend, and God spoke to me, there are things you have to let go. There are good things, and there are things that I have in plan for you. And don't take the camera out of the bag because of some towels that you think they're, they're important. Let me tell you what's important. And I want to tell you this and I'll end. The most important thing you have in your life is relationships. Yes. Yes. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had a beautiful relationship with God. What did Satan steal? What did he steal? He steal, he stole their relationship. He came and he lied to them and they believed and their relationship was broken. But for that, Jesus came to restore it. Praise his name. He still is after us to steal relationship and he wants to steal our relationships. He knows the power of love and he knows the power of unity. When we are united, we are a force. When we are ended, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of power. Do not let the enemy steal your relationship with God and the relationship with the person next to you. He is a deceiver and a liar. Don't take offense upon him. Give that to the Lord and use any opportunity to have good relationships. Everything we have in this life, it will be left behind. We would not take nothing with us, but we will take our relationships and we will take what we build for the glory of God. And I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and I can't wait to hear the guest speakers. God bless you.